Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Biopassionate. Today, we're diving into one of the most fascinating processes in biology, the generation and conduction of nerve impulses. In just a few minutes, you'll understand how your brain communicates with every part of your body, so stay tuned. Let's begin by getting to know the main player, the neuron. A neuron is a specialized cell responsible for transmitting nerve impulses, also called action potentials. A neuron has three main parts, cell body or soma. This is the control center where the cell's nucleus is located. Dendrites, branch-like structures that receive signals from other neurons. Axon, a long, thin projection that transmits signals to other neurons or muscles. Now, the magic of nerve impulse transmission happens along the axon. Before an impulse is generated, the neuron is in a resting state. This means the inside of the neuron is more negatively charged compared to the outside. This is called the resting potential. The resting potential is maintained by something called the sodium-potassium pump. This pump pushes sodium ions out of the cell and pulls potassium ions in, keeping the inside negatively charged. But when the neuron gets a strong enough stimulus, something incredible happens. Sodium channels open up and sodium ions rush into the neuron. This causes the inside of the cell to become positively charged. This shift is called depolarization and it creates the nerve impulse or action potential. Once the action potential is generated, it doesn't just stay in one place. It travels along the axon like a wave. This process is known as conduction. In many neurons, the axon is covered with a fatty substance called the myelin sheath. This myelin acts like insulation on a wire, speeding up the conduction of the impulse. The action potential jumps from one gap in the myelin to the next. These gaps are called nodes of Ranvier. This jumping process is called saltatory conduction, and it allows the nerve impulse to move rapidly along the axon. Now, how does the signal pass from one neuron to another or from a neuron to a muscle. This happens at a junction called the synapse. At the end of the axon, the impulse triggers the release of chemical messengers called neurotransmitters from tiny sacs called vesicles. These neurotransmitters cross the synapse and bind to receptors on the next neuron or muscle cell. If the signal is strong enough, it triggers a new action potential in the next cell. After the action potential has passed, the neuron must reset. Sodium channels close, and potassium channels open, allowing potassium ions to flow out, making the inside of the cell negative again. This is called repolarization. The neuron then returns to its resting potential, ready to fire again. During this reset period, known as the refractory period, the neuron can't fire another impulse immediately, ensuring that nerve impulses travel in one direction.